making this video to let you know that you can dominate your neighbors not only in the daytime but at nighttime it's not always about how green your lawn is and how manicured because at nighttime the playing field is even and what you can do is by the use of LED landscape light pretty cheap you can dominate at night let's check the video out <laughs> So as you can see, you don't have to just dominate in the daytime. You can also dominate at night. Um, adding the light uh, to your trees and your landscaping is an awesome way to make you stand out. And it's pretty inexpensive. This, what you're looking here, is a 300 watt uh, transformer. It allows me to put the LED lights on my yard and they, the, the consumption is very low. It's very different from the halogen lights. I mean, uh, for example, you know, an LED light, one LED light may cost you six, seven dollars a year um, less. Whereas a uh, halogen or the old filament type bulbs and things like that, man, cost you twenty dollars a year. You know, I think uh, LED light may even, I'm, the numbers may be off. I think the LED light may be around uh, two, two or three dollars a year. That's how inexpensive it is to run LED lights. So, this is what you start off with get your transformer here. Get your transformer, it's on Amazon. I'll tell you exactly what you're going to need coming up. Hey, I'll forget the wind. Uh, this is another light that I have. It's waterproof. I have it sitting down into the uh, ground. It's been going a whole year uh, with no issues. And this is what I use for uplighting on the tree. Man, my flower beds are horrible, but I'm getting ready to redo with some summer, springtime weeds. I mean, sorry, uh, flowers. This is the next thing that you're going to need. I got these are up lightings that I'm using. These are also LED. Super cheap. And this is also what I'm using. I'm using two of them. One here. One there. For up lighting in my trees. And the next thing you're going to need is your cables. You're going to need your cables to run your wire. That's more of the lights, the up lights. Um, the next thing you're going to need is connections. Now, I just got my gutters put up. All this was covered, but without having gutters, it just washed it all away. So now I just have to redo that. But you're going to need some connectors. So once you have all those products there, your lights, your wire, and your transformer, you are ready to install these. It's super easy. Very windy out here. So determining what you need to get. So as far as the transformer goes, it depends on how many lights that you have, how many watts that you're going to get. For example, these are seven watt. These are seven watt each. So I will need to multiply this times how many bulbs I have. Say for instance, I had 10. 
if I had 10 of these hooked up, that's 70 watts. So your transformer has to be at least 70 watts. And you want to have a little buffer on there. So you will want like a 30, 100 watt transformer, for example. I have a 300 watt transformer because I have several lights. So, again, add up the amount of lights that you want times the wattage of each light. And that will give you the size of the transformer that you need. So, another thing that you need to pay attention to is the size of the wire. Get your 12 gauge. Just start off, minimum is a 12 gauge. They do sell 16 gauge. I would suggest you just get a 12. Um, yes, you can get away with a 16 if you're doing three or four lights, but I just keep it a little more than I need in case I want to add several extra lights as I go along. Next you want to install them. Now this wire on this side is headed to the transformer and the, this wire on, goes all the way to the next light and you're just tapping in. You're just tapping in each wire with and it doesn't uh, matter which side it goes in you just put one on one side one on the other and it just continue on to the next light and you hook them all up in series in parallel like that and that's why i have these connectors it just made it really easy i just broke apart the wire in the middle and tacked two uh wire leads on each one and kept going all the way till you get to the end now it comes down to one of the hardest part, the most labor intensive part of this that you could experience. And that's how to run your wire up on the concrete. Sometimes you can find a gap in the concrete like this that you can place your wire in to have it run to wherever you want. You can get lucky like that, or you can try to establish your lighting in a pattern or in a way that it will um, adjust around a crack that you may have in your concrete. Other than that, you will have to bore up under the concrete, which that's more labor intensive. I know you guys are wanting to try to do it easy, but that's one of the hardest things that you're going to have to do if you're lucky that your property and landscape is not bothered by concrete then you don't have an issue so once you don't have any concrete in the way you have to bury your line mine is going from here to there just got my son out and put him to work and he just dug about a foot deep um you also have to worry about sprinklers and things like that, but the sprinklers are, are down further than a foot. And I know that if, whatever I'm doing, I'm not gonna be going down about a foot deep to disturb this line. So, bury it about a foot deep to wherever you wanna go, and you are pretty much done. It's really easy breezy. So that's it. Uh, quick afternoon work I didn't want to go to a complete tutorial it's pretty easy and self-explanatory just follow the simple rules that I gave and you can be dominating your neighbors at nighttime that's it so I'm thinking about maybe two three hundred dollars depending on your setup you know you can really be up and shining so it's really not that expensive it's up to you enjoy Yay! Yeah.